Girls at a Palm Beach County high school say a teacher has a history of touching them inappropriately. And now he may be facing charges for it. Our Andrew Lofholm is outside Pahokee High School tonight with the latest details. The teacher in question has been pulled from the classroom for now. The girl whose chest he's accused of touching says that it wasn't an isolated incident that he's touched her before and has a history of saying sexual comments to her. At first, teacher Stephen Goodman put his hand on his student's shoulder, then ran it down to her chest over her breast. The then 17 year old student told school district police a witness said it was outside of her clothes. She yelled stop to him and he walked away. It would be her breaking point with Goodman, her fifth period health teacher at Pahokee High School in classroom 7130. That January incident preceded a time in October when the girl says she was working on the smart board when he came up to her from behind, grabbing her waist hard enough to hurt. Police were called then, but the girl's mother says she wanted to give Goodman the benefit of the doubt, hoping administration would convince him to stop. The girl told police Goodman had a history of sexualized comments about her in front of the class, once about her breast size and another announcing she lost her virginity the night before to her boyfriend. As police were investigating these claims, two students came forward and told them the same teacher put his hands on their throats and choked them. We went by Goodman's Lake Worth home for comment, but no one answered. We did reach him by phone. Hello. Hi, Steven. Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Andrew Lofholm, and I report at Channel 12. Uh, and this, this conversation is being recorded, so you know. Uh, we, we got a report from the school district police uh, that levied some allegations against you, including touching a student's breast and also uh, putting two other students in a choke. Uh, and I wanted to get your side of this to see if you had any comments on these allegations. I, I don't. I, my lawyer told me I can't talk to anyone. Goodman denied any wrongdoing to police. The district told me that he's been reassigned within the district away from students. He's facing misdemeanors and he'll be in court later this month. A warning tonight from a high school football team in Delray Beach. They say a group of young men are posing as players trying to raise money for the team. The head coach says it's not his guys. Our Lily Ortiz looked into that story tonight. She joins us at the intersection where these possible scammers were spotted earlier today. Yeah, we're told these individuals were here today on Lantana and Jog Roads. Now, the head coach for Atlantic High School tells me that these individuals are typically in the Delray Beach area looking to make an easy buck. He says his team is not accepting donations, and he reached out to law enforcement to put a stop to this. When you look at these guys, these guys, they look like grown men. These are some of the photos and videos circulating on social media as a warning, showing what appears to be a group of guys holding signs that read, Hi, would you support our all-star football team to travel to California? No game at all. No game at all happening in California. That Atlantic High School or no high school here in, in Palm Beach County that's taking part in. Let's go. Jamal Stewart is the head football coach at Atlantic High School. He says these bogus beggars are even dressing the part, wearing jerseys representing the colors of the school. As they walk up to your window and you're having a conversation with them, they're stating, hey, I play ball at Atlantic High School. Coach says they're targeting football fans and taking advantage of people's good faith. They do not play football at Atlantic High School. And not only they're doing it here in Delray Beach, they're doing it throughout Palm Beach County. Football mom Kristen Simmons spotted these individuals several times and regrets pulling over to donate not once but twice. And when I saw them on Atlantic and military, they told me they play for Atlantic. I was like, oh good, my son goes there, like here, like I was quick to do it then. The first time I gave him $20, the second time I gave him $10. She claims these so-called con artists are touting in neighborhoods countywide and getting away with it. I called uh, the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office, I also called Bo Boyne Beach PD, I called Dairy Peach uh, PD, which they did get back with me, filed a report, uh, and the police officers actually told me that um, it's actually against their panhandling ordinance. His team devotes hours and dedication in an effort to be the best players on the field. And coach says what these individuals are doing is hurting the team. We are a Title I school, we come from Title I program. It's really hard for us to raise funds. When it comes time for us to do our fundraiser, a lot of people may not give because they felt that they have already made a donation. And he says the school district will never allow students to collect donations along busy intersections for safety reasons. The clock is ticking in Tallahassee tonight. State lawmakers have just one week left in the session, and they're still debating some very controversial bills. They include the Stop Woke Act and the so-called Don't Say Gay Bill.
both have drawn national attention and have been now condemned by the Biden administration. RJ O'Brien has been following this story, joins us now with the latest details. Jim, good evening. Eyes across the country are on Florida tonight as lawmakers are coming up against their deadline. The legislative session ends in exactly a week from now, and that's when lawmakers will pack up and head home, and any bill that hasn't passed both the House and the Senate dies. Republicans are trying to push that controversial slate of bills across the goal line before time runs out, and Democrats are vowing to pull out all the stops to keep that from happening. The first hotly debated bill, a ban on abortions after 15 weeks, getting the final thumbs up from the state Senate last night. So the bill passes. Now headed to Governor DeSantis, who's expected to sign the legislation into law. President Biden tweeting Florida's abortion bill is dangerous. We say gay. Other bills, like what opponents have labeled the don't say gay bill, also sparking protests statewide and drawing condemnation from the White House. It's cruel, it's harmful. The bill, which bans school discussions of sexual orientation, particularly in grades K through three, getting support today from Governor DeSantis. So how many parents want their kindergartners to have transgenderism or something injected into classroom instruction. DeSantis also backing an immigration bill aimed at preventing the state from doing business with any company that transports undocumented immigrants into Florida. Florida is doing everything we can. The legislation sponsored by Treasure Coast Rep John Snyder, who argues most bills are being blown out of proportion this session. When we look at the words that are on the pages of the bill, they don't line up with the sky is falling narrative that we continue to hear. But Democrats warning the Florida legislature is turning into a hotbed for culture wars as other issues fall by the wayside. This session has turned more into a culture war rather than us dealing with the kitchen table issues that Floridians want us to deal with. Is this the way state politics is now? This is the way politics is across the country. All the bills you heard about, except for that abortion bill, still have a ways to go. And there's one more bill that's getting a lot of attention. It's called the Stop Woke Act. It's a personal favorite of the governor's, and it would ban the teaching of critical race theory in schools and workplaces across the state. That bill already passed the House last week. It is headed to a likely vote in the Senate next week. All in all, there was a lot of drama in Tallahassee that's going to come out these next few days.